Hi guys, thank you very much for joining and welcome back and if you're just joining you're more than welcome to go through any of my other videos where we've got some good topics of conversation going on regarding the Essex Boys case. Please feel free to join in wherever you see fit with any of your experiences, ideas or theories about what you may feel happened to Tony Pat and Craig that evening of the 6th of December 1995. This is part two of a three part series of videos titled The Phone Masts. It really doesn't matter what order you watch these in but if you haven't seen it already please go and have a look at my part one where it has the results from a phone expert who did a load of tests for Jack and Mick's appeal and he came up with some interesting findings. Findings that theoretically put Mick and Jack out of the scene and basically putting them elsewhere. More or less establishing that Mick and Jack were not there at the murder scene. It's interesting, go and have a look. This is part two and we're looking at Darren Nichols phone only. Okay, so let's get on with this. What you're looking at here is a phone record of Darren Nichols' phone number. There's two pages and for anybody who doesn't know, Darren Nichols' network was orange back in 1995. And as you can see, uh, this is a police statement from an Orange Personal Communications Limited and it's a historical call and detail record of Darren Nichols. Now at first glance all this looks really confusing but it is quite simple once you know how it all works. It's fairly self-explanatory. Here down the left hand side as you can see is uh, titled cell site locations and here you'll see A cell data B cell data and then it goes on the next title is number making the call A number receiving the call B and the start time of the call now this A cell data refers to the number making the call and this B cell data refers to the number receiving the call as you can see there in brackets is A and the number making the call is A and then B and the number receiving the call is B. Now the start time of the call looks fairly confusing but as you break it up it's fairly easy. As you can see there 1995 and then here is 12th of the 5th sorry 1205 so that's the 5th of the 12th 1995 and here's the time look 09 21 and 44 seconds so just to explain this here reading this top line here we've got this number phoning this number at that time and this number is running off that cell site and the receiving call is from that cell site. Now I have to make an appeal here if anybody's got any information about any of these cell sites or how cell site works and any of these numbers please let us know because I am literally just guessing on what this means is it, it all seems quite self-explanatory cell site locations we learned in the last video that cell site location are those towers the mobile phone towers so I'm guessing that the, all those towers have different numbers so this cell site is that number and this cell site is that number but as you'll see as we're going through this some of it's it do, you know I don't understand it so if anybody has got any information on any of those or how any of that works then please do let us know and forgive me if I'm wrong here because I am literally just guessing but that seems self-explanatory if I'm wrong I'm sorry you know uh, correct me if I am wrong but it, 
you know obviously it says south site location so I'm guessing these are the numbers of those locations okay and just so you know this is Darren Nichols phone number here it ends with 288 now these are uh, these are records of uh, Darren Nichols making and receiving calls as you can see look there's his number there receiving the call and these are when he makes the call as I say it does look confusing but I've already been through this anyway so uh, I'll explain as I go along what I'm talking about and you know what I'm looking at so what you're looking at here now just a heads up some of this content may seem a bit far-fetched some of it may seem complete fabrication I'm not forcing you to believe anything I'm about to say but after looking through all this and realizing what they all mean I found some very interesting things in this but like I've said before and I'll say it again and again I'm not an expert on this and I'm literally just talking about things that are popping their heads up to me I'm talking about the thoughts that I'm thinking after seeing this they are theories but they may be true I do invite you to leave your comments and your thoughts and your own theories of course I keep saying it I say it in every video and if you spot something that I'm saying wrong and you know it to be wrong please let me know but I ask please don't be rude about it just a simple you're wrong there mate and an explanation as to why I'm wrong so today as you can see by the title I'm going to be looking at phone tapping and surveillance so by now you should all know that we're talking about three career criminals called Tony Tucker, Pat Tate and Craig Rolfe. If for any reason you've been following these videos and you didn't realise that we're talking about these three criminals then these videos are definitely not for you. You've been missing something and I wouldn't advise carrying on. I'm being sarcastic. Now Tony Pat and Craig were drug dealers and it may come as a bit of a surprise actually for some people who are following and who are interested in this but Pat Tate wasn't around in 1995 Pat Tate was actually in prison for the majority of 1995 now for the life of me I cannot find anywhere in any book or any document I've got or I can't find anywhere online the dates that Pat Tate was in prison from we know that he got out on the 31st of October 95, but for the life of me, I can't find when he went into prison. He went into prison after he was shot by Nipper Ellis. They found his gun in his hospital bed and he got sent to, to prison for that. It doesn't say anything in Nipper's book. I can't find anything in Bernie's. The only thing I can find is of the, uh, there's a video of him where, where Pat Tate's in the gym and the narrator of that says this video was taken as part of a documentary they were doing about the prison gym and whilst serving a 14 month sentence Pat Tate was involved with that that's what she says so that's 14 months now I've worked that out if he you usually do half of that don't you so if he did seven months then he would have been sentenced in March and then seven months later released on the 31st of October but if it was 14 months he would have been jailed in August 1994 but it paints a little bit of a picture doesn't it when you actually realize that Pat Tate wasn't around in Essex for the majority of 1995 possibly all of 1995 up to October possibly for over a year if he would do, if he did this whole 14 month sentence but I just can't find anything so if anybody knows then please let me know but when he came out of prison on the 31st of October Tony Pat Craig literally went half a fire getting back into it getting back into the drug dealing getting back into the club scene and basically just rekindling their relationship not that it mattered to Pat anyway because apparently he was drug dealing in prison Tony Tucker was constantly going in there and giving him steroids and taking drugs in there anyway so any signs of rehabilitation is out the window regards to Pat Tate 
Now, according to Sarah Saunders, Pat got out on the 31st of October. She saw him briefly at the bungalow. He came in, dropped some stuff off, got changed and went out. A party had been arranged for, for Pat's return or re release, which he attended. And when he got back in the morning of the 1st of November, Sarah Saunders said she didn't see Pat for four days. He went to bed and he stayed there for four days. Now, I personally know somebody who's been in prison and he did more or less exactly the same thing when he got out. He went to bed and he stayed there. He didn't want to hear from anybody about anything. So I'm guessing that's quite a common thing for prisoners. When they get out, they're so tired, they just need to sort of readapt. But for Pat, it was four days. So that takes us to around the 5th of November. Unfortunately, I don't have any concrete dates on these things, but fast forward to the 11th of November, tragedy strikes, and Tony, Pat and Craig are in the midst of it. It's taken Tony, Pat and Craig just over a week to get all their pills back in the clubs with Pat running the business again when somebody by the name of Leah Betts comes along and buys some pills for her birthday. After taking one, she falls into a coma and uh, for the next week, she's in that coma and ultimately she died. Now the storm that that brought on Tony Pan Craig was enormous. The Leah Betts story was huge. She became the poster girl for an anti-drugs campaign and the limelight centered around Rakows in Basildon and the police started a crackdown on all ecstasy. Dealers and users were sought by the police. It was literally, the police had started a war on the use of ecstasy and dealers were not gonna get away with this. She fell into a coma on the 11th. By the 12th or the 13th of November, it was huge. The war had started. For the next week or so, the police did all their inquiries and they whittled it down to Tony Pan Craig being the ultimate suppliers of the ecstasy that she took. Now, it's at this point that the name Tony Pan Craig were being shone on by the police and all areas of inquiry would have pointed directly to Tony Pat and Craig. Now, because of this, and they were the ultimate top drug dealers of this ecstasy, and the police's war on drugs at that time, Tony Pat and Craig were put under surveillance. Unfortunately, I don't have the, the dates and the times they started this surveillance, but they most definitely did. It's documented in the books, it's in the documentaries, but I'm guessing it was after Leah Betts died. It's all good and well there being an anti-drug campaign while she's in a coma, but had she had lived, then there probably wouldn't have been the media coverage. It would have been a slap on the wrist by her parents to Leah, don't do that again. Probably Leah Betts may have you know, done a, a little anti-drug campaign herself, but because she died, it was mega. And that's where I'm assuming that the police started their surveillance on Tony Pan Craig. Now, I'm sure you all heard recently, over the last couple of years, there was a big scandal uh, regarding a newspaper and phone tapping. It turns out that a certain newspaper had been tapping people's phones or bugging them or tapping into them for years. They were tapping celebrities' phones, missing people's phones, and in some cases, even murderers' phones. Now, phone tapping is a very common exercise that the police use whilst they're surveilling people. It's unfortunately that I haven't got any details. The chances that they were listening in on Tony Pan Craig's mobile phones is very, very high. They were high-end drug dealers, they were suspects, and they were put under surveillance, we know that. So the chances are that they had their, their phones bugged. Now, this may all seem very far-fetched, but it is a common practice, and I did look up what they have to do to, to, to get into phone tapping, and what's the law on phone tapping. 
and the law is that it's legal to tap somebody's phone the police are allowed to tap somebody's phone they're allowed to listen to conversations they're allowed to gather information from what they hear about uh, what they hear in these phone calls but what they're not allowed to do and where it becomes illegal is they're not allowed to use any of that information that they gather from the phone calls and from the phone tapping they're not allowed to use any of the information in any trial or any prosecution they can tap phones they can listen to you they can listen to all your conversations but they're not allowed to use that against you so in a nutshell it's a ploy basically to get information they need and then obviously they can start stitching people up can't they they can start plotting and planning to stitch whoever it up with the information they've got they can then go about their business and then you know be there or surveil or whatever it is they do so the bottom line of that is basically the the the, the police have put tony pan craig under surveillance possibly tapping their phones now moving on from that darren nichols was working for the police he was an informer some people are saying he's an undercover police officer i've got no evidence about that but I definitely know that he was an informant. Now, the police officers that he was informing for actually turned out to be corrupt police officers or bent coppers, as they say on the streets. It actually turns out that these two coppers were drug dealers and they dealt in amphetamines. And in fact, they arranged to set up an amphetamine factory with Darren Nichols. They also set up with Darren Nichols that they were going to rob £150,000 from a boot of a car on the way to Holland. They were bent and Darren Nichols worked for them. But these two coppers worked for Essex Police. And Essex Police had put their officers in charge of surveilling Tony Patton Craig. Now I honestly don't know how it works with surveilling people again. But... Darren Nichols was already involved with Tony Pan Craig, Mick and Jack. So as they were under surveillance, Darren Nichols has got a front seat pass. He's positioned perfectly. It's very, very likely that Darren Nichols was actually passing information about Mick, Jack, Tony Pan Craig to the police whilst they were under surveillance. So with all that in mind, let's get back to this. Now, like I said earlier, this here is Darren Nichols' phone number. Now, it's important to know that these numbers here are from the number making the call. I've been through this already. And this is uh, the, the uh, number receiving. So, Craig's, um, Darren's made this call to this one. And there's the, the numbers of the cell site. Now... This is where I, I need your help because I don't know for sure. But you can see these blank spaces here, can't you? So that is most definitely a call from Darren to that number. And there it says to me that he's answered that call. That's the number of the cell site from the, from the number making the call. And that's the number receiving it. Now these blank bits here, you can see here on the left hand side, this is where I'm suggesting that these are missed calls. It's a call to Darren, but he, he didn't answer, so it doesn't record where the number has come from. Does that make sense? Now again, I can't stress more that I might be wrong there. I don't know. But that to me is saying that he's missed that call and there wasn't a call. So he's taken all these calls. Look, he's missed a call, taken a call, missed, missed, taken, missed, missed, taken, taken. Now we get down to here. And I don't know if you know, but that number there is... The orange answer machine 073 100 123 as you can see there that's Darren's phone number 
and he's obviously there phoned his answer machine. It's important to remember that because when he's missed a call in, in you'll see as we go through the video as he's missed a call he phones his answer machine which says to me that he's missed the call and then and he's picked it up via his answer machine. Right earlier on I told you that this might seem a bit far fetched but please bear with me. Now as you can see all these times there's the date and the time it's called. Okay, this is where it comes from, um, this is where it's going, and this is the time. 1995, 5th of the 12th, 1048 in the morning, 33 seconds. Now, if you have a look here, at this phone call here, so a call was made, it was picked up, it's Darren calling, this number and this number ends 343 three. now that may not look suspicious until you actually read the time there are two phone calls here two registered phone calls one answered and one didn't answer both from exactly the same number but if you look here it's exactly the same time as well 1995, 5th of the 12th, 1905 and 24 seconds. At exactly the same time, this phone has also joined at exactly that same time. 1995, 5th of the 12th, 1905 and 24 seconds. Now when I noticed that, I I was I, I started this thought process of phone tapping. There are two phones here listening to the phone call of Darren. Now I had to have a look to see how phone tappings works and again I make an appeal to any of you lot out there if there's anybody else who, who knows anything about how phone tapping works please can you comment below and let me know uh, it's easy to tap a phone on from a landline phone but it's difficult to do it from mobile phones and from what I can gather you need at least two phones to tap a mobile phone I read a bit it's far too complicated for me I don't understand it so any, if anybody's got any information offhand that can help with that then please I'm interested I want to know please leave any of your comments or any of your information in the comments below I'm interested but getting back to this there are two phones in this one conversation here right so after that you can see here he's missed the call and then the following morning he's phoned his answer machine and then it goes on he answers he answers 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 and then from what I can gather he's missed these calls because this is you know this is the the maker of the call and this is who's receiving it so you can see there Darren's missed these calls now we go on to page two same titles and immediately like you can see that Darren's using his uh, ants machine again but he's used his ants machine here but look at the times again here there's another caller there's another phone at exactly the same time look 1995 1206 14 um, so we've moved into the 6th of December now. It's 1995, the 6th of December, 14.56, zero, zero hours. And another phone, it seems, has, has joined in on that conversation or on that phone call. At exactly the same time, 1995, 6th of the 12th, 14.56, zero, zero hours exactly. As you can see, 
somebody's joined exactly the conversation again there uh, it's 1995 6 of the 12 1506 20 two phones are on that call then his next calls are to his answer machine again here he phones his answer machine and again there looks somebody else has phoned the phone and at exactly that time 15 46 31 seconds exactly the same time somebody else has joined that call he's he's in his ants machine and somebody else is on the phone look and like i say it gets regular here again exactly the same time darren phones his ants machine and somebody else has joined 15 47 02 that time Okay, so moving on, he phones his ants machine again. Now we're getting to something very interesting, and I've been dying to show you this. Now, this um, he goes, he phones his ants machine here, and this is at uh, five twenty-five forty-eight. Okay, somebody else has joined that phone call. It's exactly the same time. Look, twelve the six fifteen uh seventeen twenty five forty eight somebody's it seems like somebody's there listening on the phone some another phone has joined that call now this bit here Darren phones his ants machine and at exactly the same time somebody else again it seems has joined that conversation or that phone call Darren has listened in somehow or it could be somebody else is listening on through Darren's phone to this um, sorry this one now yet yeah, um, sorry no that's that's completely wrong I've just done that completely wrong this one here now Darren has exactly the same a caller has joined that call but this time Darren's not Dar Darren Darren's is blank here there's a call to Darren and there's this number here and this is at 16 44 43 now you may think this is all a bit far-fetched and that somebody's listening listening in on Darren's phone calls but what makes this very very interesting is at 16 44 Is exactly the same time that Sarah Saunders phoned Pat Tate whilst being in the Range Rover so how did Darren know about that phone call he may have been listening in of course this is all on the basis that this is a phone tapping scenario but that seems very very dodgy how Darren Nichols has received a call from this number at exactly the same time as what Sarah Saunders did phone Pat and this don't forget Darren Nichols is saying his phone was had a weak signal and you know he had to move up the road to try and use his phone Darren has never mentioned this phone call. He's received it, look. He received that phone call at 6.44. It's just very suspicious how at exactly the same 6.44, Sarah Saunders is phoning Pat. And it's always been that thing. 
How did Darren Nichols know about that phone call? He blamed Mick. But Mick wasn't there. We know that now. Or I personally think Mick wasn't there. He was over in near a village called Bullfan. Now I'm not saying that Darren Nichols was in the Range Rover. I'm saying that he was listening in on that phone call from Sarah to Pat. I know it's all a bit far-fetched, but you never know, do you? So anyway, we come down here and um, 15 minutes later, we get these two phone calls. Now this number is Jack Wombs' phone number. And as you can see, he phones Darren Nichols at 16.59, 24 seconds. And he does an answer look. And then, again, he phones, Jack phones Darren at 6.59, 35 seconds. So that's 11 seconds after each other. And again, he doesn't answer. Now, that phone expert said that the first call that Jack made was for one second and his second call was for four seconds. Now, Darren Nichols' next call, look, was to his answer machine. 20 minutes later. So that's saying to me that Jack called him one second, one second, you can't say anything in one second. It went through to his answer machine and Jack hung up. It went, the second call was four seconds. It went through to his answer machine and he said, your car's done. But Darren didn't pick up, he didn't answer. And Darren only picked his message up 20 minutes later. By that, you can see there he's phoned his answer machine. But notice again, look, that time he answers his answer machine, there's another caller in. It's exactly the same time, 7, 19, 52 seconds, look. It seems there's another phone that's been connected to his phone. And the last one there, look. He, he phones his answer machine and it seems that somebody else has joined that phone call at 9.21.59 seconds. Now it's just occurred to me that um, you, you may think that that sequence of numbers always pops up every time he uses his answer machine or every time he phones his answer machine. But he phones his answer machine there and nobody joins in. You know, there's another call later, uh, like 10 minutes later. And again there, phones his answer machine. No other phones have joined. And again there. Now, this phone call that I find very suspicious that he made at 6.44, exactly the same time as Sarah Saunders, that phone number there, the one that ends 343, is the same number that he did, this is back to page one, is the same number, this is back to page one, and this is the same number, 343, look, and this is the first time we saw this connection of there being two phones on the same phone call. It was to that number. Now that, when I, when I first saw that, although it seems a bit far-fetched and a bit strung out maybe, but that said that there's some sort of phone syncing going on. This is Darren Nichols phone syncing with this number. It's the first time we see it. It's the first time we see that 
that number that that number sharing kind of the, the time sharing is it exactly the same time two phones are on that phone call at exactly the same time look that number there 343 three, with the end in 343 three, is the same number there look that connects at 16.44 at the same time as Sarah phoned. Now again I can't stress anymore this might be completely science fiction to any of you guys but now I can't stress more this might be completely science fiction to any of you guys but let's recap on that Tony Pan Craig were under surveillance when the police put people under surveillance such as Tony Pan Craig they probably 90% would have tapped their phones Darren Nichols was an undercover copper an informant he worked for the police there were two bent coppers in the equation here they're the people who Darren Nichols worked for Darren Nichols was involved with Mick Jack Tony Pan Craig the chances that the coppers being allowed to surveil Tony Pat and Craig are very high the phone tapping it's likely that their phones were tapped it's likely that Darren Nichols had access to that phone tapping it's likely that Darren Nichols was listening in on Tony Pan Craig's phone calls and here and that's just too suspicious for me that he heard a call he took a call at 16.44 exactly the same time as Sarah Saunders and then later on fast forward till he gets arrested he's talking about this phone call this phone call is the highlight of his statement there was a phone call from Sarah Saunders to Pat I'm thinking Darren Nichols heard that phone call through some sort of phone tapping through the surveillance I actually stumbled across that by accident this was the highlight of my interest when I was looking at this this is Jack's phone call he's saying look Darren didn't answer those calls but then the the phone expert says there were two calls you know Jack was saying the two calls failed he phoned Darren and they failed and Jack was at the wheat chief he phoned Darren twice and both failed now the expert said that the calls were one second and four seconds and enough to, Darren Nichols said that you know well the court believed Darren Nichols said, Darren Nichols said that that was Jack phoning him to tell him to come and pick him up but immediately after we see tw well 20 minutes later Darren then uses his phone to phone his answer machine so what that's saying to me is that yes Jack did call him and Darren didn't pick up he, he didn't pick up and it went through to his answer machine and Darren got the message 20 minutes later but again you can see look another phone when he picked that up on his answer machine it looks like there's another phone call like there's another number he's, t he's taken this phone call you know when he's at exactly the same time it's like when he uses his phone somebody else is there on the phone with him I don't know what to say I don't know what to, I don't know how that's gonna go down that's the way it's coming across to me I'm you know again it may all be wrong but I don't know I honestly don't know if it's true or not I don't know 
if anybody's got any information about what I've been saying about these numbers here then please let me know you know d does anybody agree with any of this anything that I'm just saying about phone tapping is it all a bit too you know science fiction James Bond type thing you know <laughs> I have no idea. This is all coming from my own thoughts. It was just pouring out when I was looking at this. All these suspicious phone calls. That's what I was getting. Especially that. Darren Nichols receiving a phone call at exactly the same time as Sarah Saunders. 1644. Darren's never ever mentioned receiving a phone call at 1644 that's just too suspicious anyway I think the highlight of this video is that I just what I believe right there that Jack Worms phoned Darren and that shows that he, that Darren didn't take the call Jack may have left a message but he most definitely didn't take that call otherwise there would be numbers here in these gaps and you can see there, 20 minutes later, after Jack's phoned him, he's phoned his answer machine. So that is telling me that Jack did phone Darren. He phoned him twice, but he left a message. He didn't, Darren didn't pick up. He left a message, 20 minutes later, Darren picked that up. I appreciate your time, guys. Open for discussion. Please leave your comments down below. And uh, don't forget, part three is coming up uh, maybe in the next couple of days. But uh, that's a good one because we're going through all the defense for Mick and Jack, which is brilliant. And so I'll see you in part three. Take care of yourselves, guys.